It's official. Bodybuilders have been dying early since the golden era. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookham here, and today I want to present my recent study that demonstrates that since the golden era of bodybuilding, bodybuilding athletes have started to die early. I decided to take on this topic of research with my colleague, Dr. Connor Heffernan of Ulster University, and in this video, I'm going to show you the results that demonstrate this most concerning fact and worse. Since the introduction of steroids and performance enhancing drugs into bodybuilding during the golden era, we have seen the physiques of bodybuilding athletes grow ever larger and more impressive into the now modern mass monster era, where we are seeing the deleterious health effects of ever increasing performance enhancing drug use and ever increasing physique standards. Bodybuilding as a sport for a long time has ignored the elephant in the room, as obvious as it has been, with the media reporting ever earlier deaths of bodybuilding personalities and athletes, and most people including academics have turned a blind eye to this ever increasing topic of concern. As obvious as it has been, the first academic to actually address this issue was my friend and colleague Dr. John Fair. In his seminal book, Mr. America The Tragic History of a Bodybuilding Icon, Fair actually, he tabulates the lifespans of Mr. America winners between the Silver Era and Golden Era. Here's the page actually, right there. And in tabulating this data, the lifespan actually of silver and golden era bodybuilders, he points to the fact that bodybuilding lifespans were starting to decrease. This sparked a great deal of interest in me, so I decided to look into this topic in a scientific manner as I will now explain. I decided to expand on Dr. Fair's observation and observe the mortality or lifespan of bodybuilding athletes from its very beginning, the Bronze Era, that is from 1900 to 1930, and compare it to the lifespan of bodybuilding athletes in the two subsequent eras, the Silver Era and Golden Era as I have defined them in the past. To ask the question as to whether the lifespan of bodybuilding athletes had been decreasing in the 20th century, I approached lecturer in social sciences of sport at Ulster University, Dr. Connor Heffernan, with my idea, and he loved it. So we decided to collect information on 120 bodybuilding athletes, 40 from each respective era, and report on the mortality of these athletes. Upon performing statistical analysis, we found that athletes from the Bronze and Silver era had similar average lifespans of 75 years and 80 years respectively, with the average lifespan of silver era bodybuilders being 5 years greater than those of the bronze era, as can be seen in this figure. Bodybuilders from the golden era, however, had the lowest average lifespan with 69 years, being 6 years lower than bodybuilders from the bronze era, and 11 years lower than those of the silver era. We performed further statistical analysis using t-tests, which allowed the comparison of each era and determined whether they are statistically different or not, and revealed the following. There was no statistical difference in the lifespan between Bronze Era athletes and Silver Era athletes. However, there was a statistical difference between Bronze Era athletes and Golden Era athletes. The greatest statistical difference was observed between Silver Era athletes and golden era athletes. These results indicate that when compared to the golden era, a greater lifespan was achieved by athletes from both the bronze and silver era, with athletes from the silver era achieving the greatest lifespan from all three eras, indicating that the silver era bodybuilding athletes had the greatest longevity. Now I previously presented preliminary data on this analysis a couple of months ago, and it really is no surprise that Bronze Era and Silver Era bodybuilding athletes, which were all likely natural and at least not dependent on performance enhancing drugs, displayed greater lifespans, decreased mortality and increased longevity, 
and I do wish to expand on the reasons and factors why we believe this is so a little later, as obvious as they are because they are worth discussing. However, when I first presented preliminary data on this topic, some comments I actually received suggested that we compare the life expectancy of the general population at the time to the lifespan of bodybuilding athletes from the Bronze Era, Silver Era and Golden Era, which was a great suggestion that both Connor and I had also thought about, so we did. So looking at this table, we divided the calculated mean value of lifespan of bodybuilders from each era with the mean life expectancy of the population taken from world or western populations, which were sourced online. To ensure compatibility, the year 1860 was chosen as the birth year corresponding to Bronze Era athletes, 1900 was the year chosen as the birth year corresponding to the Silver Era athletes, and 1950 was chosen as the year for Golden Era athletes. Bronze Era athletes had a life expectancy at least twofold higher than the average life expectancy of the general population in the West, and up to two and a half times greater life expectancy than the rest of the world. Silver Era athletes had a life expectancy of 1.7 fold higher than the average life expectancy of Western populations, and at least two and a half fold greater life expectancy than the world population. Golden Era athletes, however, had a similar life expectancy to Western populations, 1.2 to 1 fold, which is pretty much the same, but a higher life expectancy when compared to the rest of the world's population's life expectancy. From the data we have presented, it is obvious that athletes from the Bronze and Silver Era displayed the greatest longevity, especially when we compare their lifespans to the population averages of each respective era of the 19th century. And it is rather unfortunate to observe that this almost protective or even life enhancing effect, if you wish to call it that, I definitely do, which doubled one's lifespan was significantly diminished during the golden era by half, which coincides with the adoption of performance enhancing drugs and increasing physique standards. When I look at this data, it is almost depressing. It appears that natural bodybuilding as a sport peaked at least in longevity, in health, in the 1930s, 40s and 50s and produced the greatest lifespan and longevity in these athletes, increasing their life expectancy to twice as high as the general population. The practices at the time were likely influenced by their predecessors, the pioneers of the Bronze Era, who practiced physical culture using basic gym equipment such as dumbbells, barbells, chest expanders, as well as gymnastics equipment, as Bronze Era athletes were truly all-round athletes concerned in the cultivation of their health and the strength of the body. Having said that, Bronze Era athletes did not have the luxury of modern medicine or understanding of nutrition, yet on average lived longer lives than their Golden Era contemporaries some 30 years later, with double the life expectancy. So these Bronze Era athletes, I mean these guys, they definitely knew what they were doing and they were definitely doing something right. Silver Era bodybuilders focused on the cultivation and development of health, strength and vitality, as was so clearly worded on the pages of muscle mags from the time. Silver era athletes trained full body routines consisting of dumbbell and barbell movements with almost no machines used at the time. Very few were invented back then. They focused on whole food diets and very few supplements were used and of those that were available these were mostly based on food extracts such as desiccated liver, wheat germ oil, and bee pollen. Protein supplements at the time were in their infancy and mostly consisted of soy, egg, or milk concentrates. Further, Silver Era athletes focused on developing a balanced and aesthetically pleasing physique, and most were not concerned in being as big as humanly possible. 
The physique standards at the time also required much less definition that was displayed later on in the golden era, allowing them to not sink to such low body fat percentages which are detrimental to human health. All these factors likely lead to the long lifespan, double that of the lifespan of the general population that they were able to achieve. And understand also that the bronze and silver era athletes, these guys had to go through depression, famine, and even world wars, yet they still had greater lifespan than those athletes of the golden era. The results from our paper have several implications for the contemporary and modern practice of fitness and bodybuilding. There is no doubt that the culture of fitness has a positive effect on our health and lifespan. We as people have known this for thousands of years. However, the specific modern practices that appeared during the latter part of the 19th century have demonstrated to be detrimental to the health and lifespan of athletes, increasing their mortality. This trend, of course, should raise concerns over the current state of bodybuilding and the competitive standards that are currently enforced on competitive physique athletes. It does suggest that competition organizers may need to reconsider the criteria in judging and reintegrate better health and wellness aspects into the standards to enhance the well-being and health of its participating athletes. Further, it is also important to address the impact of social media on the culture of fitness. With the advent of social media, our exposure to the physiques displaying single-digit body fat percentages, extreme muscle mass, and worse, illegal recreational drug use practices have normalized these practices to the point that expectations have led to increasing body dysmorphia. People are simply not content with the cultivation of health and longevity anymore, and instead of focusing on improving themselves and comparing themselves. The temptation to compare ourselves to extreme physiques and adopt dangerous drug use has led to the proliferation of these practices that are likely, as history has shown, to be more damaging than beneficial to our health and mental state. So I hope you have enjoyed this video on my first academic bodybuilding publication on this most important and interesting topic. And if you have enjoyed this video and discussion, please like the video, subscribe. And as concerning as this topic is, I invite you to comment in the comment section. I am, of course, very interested in hearing your feedback. So if you're interested in reading this paper, it is available for free. It is uh, open access. Just click the web link in the description below. Please find the PDF link on the web page. You actually have to click on the PDF uh, you know, link there, and you can download the PDF for free to read. Would love to hear your feedback. I will be following up this publication with several others, and I will be updating you on those in the coming months. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal high quality bodybuilding posters of the golden era stars, merchandise and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eda, John Grimmick, Reg Park, and many other golden era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the golden era stars are also available and to collaborate, please get in touch. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to prove or disprove uh, Vince. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs 
of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14 month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for. Uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the classic physique bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.